There are strong indications that in early 2023, I, Omali Ishitela, chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, founder of the Uhuru Freedom Movement, will be indicted along with other Uhuru leaders and members by the federal government of the United States using the bogus and slanderous charge that we are Russian agents. The United States government and its Department of Justice will attempt to put us on trial and imprison us for fighting for the liberation of African people in the United States and around the world. Make no mistake, that's what their objective is. And that's why they are moving against me the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru movement, because we are struggling for the liberation of black people, African people, but they will fail. We will win. I'm 81 years old. My political work for the last 60 years or so is influenced by the fact that in my entire life, nearing 100 years, I have not known a single day when my people were not experiencing oppression, exploitation, and humiliation. For most of my life, I have worked to build the movement for freedom for Black people in the United States and around the world, most significantly beginning with my work as an organizer with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in 1960s. Since 1972, I have organized and led the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement, a worldwide organization fighting for the self-determination of African people everywhere. Our organizational presence extends to nearly every continent. We exist throughout the United States, Europe, the United Kingdom, Africa, and the Caribbean. Our party presides over more than 50 institutions of economic development and self-reliance for the African community, including numerous projects in North St. Louis, Missouri, known as the Black Power Blueprint. On July 29th of 2022, the FBI violently and militarily raided my home in North St. Louis, Missouri, where I live with my wife, the deputy chair of the African People's Socialist Party, Ona Zanegi Shatella, along with six other homes and offices of Uhuru movement leaders. Now the US government is attempting to discredit our righteous struggle to free our people from the perpetual immiseration we face in this country stemming from America's unresolved uh, so-called original sin of slavery and colonialism, a sin whose existence was given testimony by US President Joseph Biden on December 15th of this year. Their case against us is baseless and ridiculous. Our case against them is backed by an undeniable history of centuries of ongoing atrocities against our people and our movement by the United States government, who have often used the FBI and departments of justice as their political weapons against us. When they put us on trial, we will put them on trial. The U.S. government must be made to explain this attack on us in light of the well-known history of COINTELPRO and other covert and overt acts of surveillance, harassment, imprisonment, and or assassination of leaders such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Marcus Garvey, W.E.B. Du Bois, Paul Robeson, Fred Hampton, and many, many, many others. The U.S. is attempting to hide this blatant attack on Black people by saying that it is an attack on Russia, not the African Liberation Movement. How will they defend this absurd notion against the overwhelming evidence of the criminal colonial assaults by the FBI and Justice Department against African people historically, often using the specter of the Russians or the communists as their legal cover? This case is not about whether I went to Russia, whether or not I have a position around the war in Ukraine that was the same as that of the Russians. This attack was perpetrated against us 
because we have always fought for the liberation of Africa and African people everywhere. Brothers and sisters, friends, comrades, the truth of the matter is freedom has always been illegal in this country for black people and truthfully in most of the world. I can't help but remember the fact that Nat Turner, who today uh, can be spoken of with some element of pride uh, because he led a struggle in 1831 to try and free our African people. And this was from uh, in, in uh, Virginia. And when he was captured, uh, he was actually put on trial. According to United States law, he was put on trial. And his trial, in his trial, he was convicted. And so the truth of the matter is fighting for freedom is illegal in the United States, has always been illegal in the United States since the advent of colonial slavery up to today. Even though the laws have been changed and modified and the goalposts constantly moved uh, to another place so that the struggle for freedom uh, has to go beyond the last place that they had put it for us legally. So, uh, the legal statutes the United States will use to execute this political attack this time will include the so-called Foreign Agents Re Registration Act, FARA, which they also used in 1951 to construct their indictment of W.E.B. Du Bois for nearly identical charges of working for the Russians. This is selective prosecution. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee and other Israeli Lobbying organizations are seemingly immune from prosecution under the FARA law, despite their obvious public functions as agents of the Israeli government. The Foreign Agents Registration Act is never or almost never enforced unless it is used as a tool against Africans and other colonized peoples. We will raise up our supposed legal rights to freedom of speech freedom of, of association and freedom of assembly. But more importantly, the government must be made to answer for their oppression and terror against black people historically. Beginning in the 1970s, our party laid out a strategic approach to winning the freedom of black people that included building relationships with people all around the world to support the struggle for African self-determination in the United States. At our first party Congress held in Oakland, California in 1981, we received solidarity statements from organizations and governments from around the world, including FECOPES in, in Colombia, Casa El Salvador, the Pan-African Congress of Azania, South Africa, the FSLN government from Nicaragua, the New Jewel Movement led government in Grenada, Casa Chile, the Revolutionary Workers' Party of Argentina, the Association of Vietnamese Patriots in the United States and the National United Movement of Barbados. This helps to give lie to the notion that our connection to a Russian NGO is evidence of an illicit relationship that we would have with a foreign power, as they call it. I traveled to Ireland more than 40 years ago to meet with the Irish Republican Socialist Party at a time when the Irish people were engaged in a struggle for their independence from British colonialism. In 1983, the Spear newspaper published an article covering how we won the Irish Republican Socialist Party to support our demand for reparations. They held a press conference with us in Belfast, Northern Ireland. The Irish Republican Socialist Party came out and said that they didn't want any monetary donations from any Irish people in America who were not supporting the liberation struggle of black people in the United States. Our party has a half century long historical trajectory that precedes anything that the US government is talking about now in terms of Russia. I was in Nicaragua representing black people after the Nicaraguan revolution based on our relationship with the Sandinista National Liberation Front with whom we worked closely in San Francisco leading up to their victory in 1979. In 1982, we held the first world tribunal on reparations for black people in history. We indicted the United States government based on international law and the right of an oppressed people to wield our own state power. One aspect of the international law used for the reparations tribunal was the question of the United Nations Convention on the prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide. 
An international panel of judges ruled at the end of the two days of testimony that the United States is guilty of genocide against African people. It took another 40 years for the United States to ratify this genocide convention and only in a fashion that freed itself from any possible trial or repercussions. The reason the United States wouldn't ratify the genocide convention was because they wanted to evade responsibility for their treatment of the colonized African and indigenous peoples in this country. The United States government and the FBI's attack on the Uhuru movement did not begin in 2022. It goes back decades. In 1996, more than 300 militarily armed police attacked our Uhuru house in St. Petersburg, Florida with airplanes and helicopters. They pumped the entire reserve of tear gas in the city into the Uhuru house where a mass meeting was going on following the police murder of an 18 year old African teen. This was the same Uhuru house they just invaded and raided again on July 29th. Except then they didn't say it was the Russians. They didn't give any explanation for why they did it except we were organizing around the murder of 18 year old Tyrone Lewis who had been gunned down by the police department in St. Petersburg, Florida. As I mentioned earlier, Biden himself, when he was trying to win the loyalty of our people in Africa had to confess the original sin of this country as he calls it, as it has been called, as Karl Marx defined it, as I have said over and over again, quoting Marx's characterization of the building of the existing social system through enslavement of African people. That is the stolen labor of African people on the stolen land of the indigenous people, the foundation on which the United States rests. Let's call Biden as a witness to testify about this original sin. Let's cross-examine him with these questions. Did the original sin ever go away? Can we explain the police murder of George Floyd by the original sin? Can we explain the attacks on the Uhuru movement by this original sin? After the FBI raid on seven offices and homes of the Uhuru movement in two cities in the pre-dawn hours of July 29, 2022, there was a tremendous amount of interest, support, and outrage coming from literally millions of people and organizations throughout the United States and the world. Numerous organizations and individuals, including St. Louis Alderman from Ward 18, Jesse Todd, Zaki Baroudi, President General of the Universal African People's Organization, New York City Councilpersons Charles and Inez Barron, Marshall Coleman, Adebayo, Nellie Bailey, and others sent messages of support, all of which are cited on our website, handsoffuhuru.org. But as indictments loom, now is the time to escalate the campaign to mobilize massive public support for the Uhuru movement, the African People's Socialist Party, its leaders and members, and the right of African people everywhere to organize and advocate for our liberation. Resources are urgently needed for our legal defense and campaign work. We are recruiting into our legal support team. We urge all supporters to sign the emergency response pledge in preparation for political actions once the indictments come down at handsoffuhuru.org forward slash emergency response. That is handsoffuhuru.org forward slash emergency response. Our victory will be won in the streets. Join the movement. Put the colonial state on trial. Turn the tables. Win broad mass support from African people and other forces inside this country and around the world. What is increasingly significant and important is that we tell the world that we know what has happened to Black people in this country historically and how the federal government and various agents of the government have always worked to keep us from winning our freedom, how they have used the law as instruments of maintaining the oppression of African people to justify our slavery, to justify colonialism, to justify the status quo of a system that has been built uh, at the expense of the freedom and resources of Black people, of African people, of the Mexican and indigenous people here, of the oppressed and colonized peoples around the world. We say that, that it is important to join the hands off Uhuru, hands off 
Africa Defense Committee and to get involved wherever you're located. Build a committee, donate, hold a fundraiser, be a part of making history and winning a landmark victory for the African liberation movement that will forever change the world. We will win. We are winning. Uhuru.